Hey folks, and welcome back to looking at how to do substance designer type things in Houdini. In the previous parts, we've taken a look at building out some medium shapes and getting good control of our large shapes. In this section, I'd like to take a look at adding some finer detail and noise. And really, that's an excuse to try and get more data out of our height fields and into cops. So I'd like to get control over some of the flatter areas to add some noise into these flat areas. So underneath my height field distort, I'm going to put down a height field and we can just type feature here for mask by feature. Hit shift and enter, it'll put the node in and set the display flag. And you can see it's starting to pick up those areas for me almost straight away actually. So I'm just gonna tweak these values just a small little bit. You get a lot more control here depending on what your own needs will be. So how do I get this information to SOPs? Well, if I come into my SOP import here, by default, my SOP import is just pulling in the height data as color. If I want to bring in more custom planes, so here's the custom planes tab here, I need to fill this guy out. And the way to do that is, is on the SOP tab, if we hit set planes from SOP, it will go and grab whatever masks it can find out on our height field. So we we'll just hit this guy. And if we come over to our image tab here, you can see it has now, it's now turns the default image planes to none. So we can see our custom planes are height and mask. And here we can see we have our height and we have our mask. So most of our compositing operations are going to be looking for a color and an alpha. And we have got them turned off at the moment. So we're gonna to need to go and turn those back on. And if we do so, you can see that we now have color back and we have alpha and these are mirroring the height here and we still have our we still have our mask as well if you have some issues with that you could also use a channel copy and you could copy the height back into the color channel so let's just zip down to the bottom of our composite here and we can see our composite is still working okay here but we now have these extra channels that we can use to manipulate more data let's go and use our mass data to color in the shearer faces of our rocks here so i'm going to put down a color and let's change the color to something like a dark green, maybe. So I'm going to try and grab our mask from our height field. I'm going to plug that into the mask of the color. And let's go over to the mask tab here. And instead of using the alpha, let's use this mask we just created. And now I've just got green in those areas. I might just blur that off just a small bit. And at the bottom of my color branch here, I'm going to put another composite. After trying out the different composite operations, I set it to under, and I can just lower the background weight, I think in this case, just to darken up those areas. So let's take this out to our color out here. And if we just move the viewport, we'll get an update. And now we've got green running across the steeper areas of our surface. We're gonna try a similar process, but going into a noise node. So I'll put down a noise node here, and I'm going to go from the levels into the mask of my noise. I'm going to set the noise over to be black and white and I'm going to set the noise mask to use the mask that we generated from the height field. I'd like to put the noise onto the flatter areas rather than the steeper areas so I'm going to invert this mask. I'm going to increase the spatial frequency and I'm going to increase it a lot in one direction. We'll put up to 350 here and we'll put it up to maybe 25 in Y so we can create some striations in the rock surface. Let's put a transform underneath this so we can change the angle. And we'll put the transform into a composite and it's going to go into the B pipe of the composite and our height data can go into A. And because it's going to be smaller detail, maybe what we'll do is we'll put it out towards a normal map. So the labs guys have created a node called labs normal from grayscale and that will give us a normal map based on the black and white values of our height map. So I want to take this normal data back into my shader. So let's put a null down and we will call it cop out underscore n for normal. We can go and grab our shader here and I'm just going to drag and drop the address into my normal check texture and you need to put an op colon before that. And now we get the normal map picking up the detail coming through from the noise node which is masked by the stuff from the height field. Now I could if I want to also plug this into the height field so maybe before the normal map here if we take a look this 
is very similar to what we had going into the height field, but it has the extra noise added on top. So we could also plug that into the height field as well. You can see it is a little bit strong going into the height field. So if I come back to my noise node here, what I could do is pull down the amplitude of the noise. And these are gradiated from one all the way down to zero. So maybe if we put it down to 0 0.1 for the moment and see what that looks like. So that is still maybe a little too high. So let's go slightly lower. We'll go down to 0 0.05 here. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit better. And let's go to our transform here. I'd like the noise to run parallel to the larger canyon like shapes. So if I go minus 45 here and I just move the viewport around so it updates. Yeah, so now it's basically running parallel. Like the wind is running across the surface and breaking up the surface of the rocks. And we get some moss-like structure growing on the shear faces that are away from the wind. So we can go and adjust all of these values and we can dial them up and down to our own taste. But that is how you can take the mass from a height field and use it within your cop network to drive your textures. I'll take a minute now to go and adjust some of these values. So I've gone back and adjusted all the values throughout the network for different looks and it's pretty flexible in terms of uh, building out different variations and kind of pushing towards one direction or another. In this case really I've just made some more defined shapes up at the start of my graph and I adjusted some of the colours and some of the noise details. I changed the original colours but I also added a colour lookup here so this is the only new node really and the colour lookup I changed it from a LUT file, which is what it's looking for by default, to a color ramp parameter. And this allows me to just add different color ramps here. So I added just a sand one and I find the more monochrome ones are a bit more subtle overall, but you could come in and use magma here and it will update my map. And if I move the viewport here, we'll start to get a magma feel overall. Now, usually the color lookup ramps with the stronger colors are a bit too strong. So usually what I do is come to mask here and I dial, dial down the overall effect. It ends up looking a little bit too blown out. So usually I keep this number relatively low and then you get a more kind of nice washed out look. If you have the lab tools installed, you can right click on where it says color ramp look up here and you can say sample screen colors. So I'll just dock Houdini over here for one second and I've got a, an image of the beautiful Cliffs of Moher here. So let's go and sample from that. If you drag for too long, you will get an a lot of stops so you need to do this relatively quickly otherwise you'll get loads of stops across here but that should be enough to grab those colors and you can see now I could start to use this to build out towards particular reference. You can see that the shading here still looks a little bit off and that usually points towards something being up with the normal map. In this case what we need to do is flip the normal map. Now you can flip it on the normal map creation here or you can flip it out here on the labs quick material so it's one or the other so I'm going to flip it just here and you can see that looks a little bit more natural overall now I'm pushing the normal map quite hard I'm turning it up quite a lot over here as well because I'm not plugging it into the height at the moment so now it feels like we've got more control over the big shapes the medium shapes and we've got more control over the high frequency smaller shapes at the moment, all of this is confined to a, a grid because we've built it off of a height field. It would be nice to be able to put this onto some 3D models, which is what we're going to take a look at doing in the next part. Thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next video.